And we're back. I am your host, Cosign, and we're about to follow this dollar and make it make sense. A lot of ballers on this panel today. According to <laughs> the Brookings Institute, the global digital comedy economy is worth $11.5 trillion. That's trillion with a T. Yet Black folks aren't getting a big piece of the pie. Recently, with all of the social protests taking place across the country, the tech industry has found itself on the wrong and very white side of history. According to Market Watch, venture capital from Silicon Valley to New York remains an industry deeply rooted in its investing and hiring patterns, self-perpetuating funding for a limited number of privileged communities that are overwhelmingly white, male, and Ivy League educated. Javier, I'm coming right to you, bro. Yes, I know sir. you're almost at the one million dollar mark with your uh with your seed round, but how hard was it for you to crack in the door um when initially trying to your fund your invention? You know what yeah. I mean? For sure. It was definitely one of the most challenging things I've ever done in my life. And not just because of the endeavor being black. That's definitely the underarch, no matter what anyone says about it. Um, uh, but ultimately the number one thing, we're doing it from the Midwest, right? And doing that, you know, you're not gonna get the access. I think like 80% of venture capital goes towards the East and West Coast, specifically like basically Silicon Valley, LA area-ish up to like Boston and New York. So knowing that up front, you know, you know you're going to have a little bit of an up, uh, uphill battle, but doing it in the Midwest, doing it in Detroit, obviously you got ties to Chicago has been like a, I say a competitive advantage. Why? You get a lot to, you get a chance to do a lot more with, uh, uh, dollar goes a little bit further, number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, you got firms uh, such as um, that are actually from the West Coast and East Coast. You got some such as Backstage Capital. Um, you got uh, some that are Midwest based like Lightship Capital that literally are geared towards investing in black and brown founders, underrepresented minorities. Uh, one of our investors like to say Marlon Hamilton under uh, underestimated. Right. Folks that typically are overlooked for these dollars. Um, programs like Transparent Collective, I can name them ad nauseum. The reality is that as a founder of color, black founder specifically, you know, you're not, it's one thing that I stumbled upon is that I try to run that same playbook, right? Um, that our peers that don't look like us were running, right? So I found the playbook to get into tech. I'm like, cool, this worked. All right, I'm just gonna copy and paste whatever is next to get to this next level. No, 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 we have a different set of rules in this game, right? Get to revenue a little bit faster. Things that do make financial sense, they'll get me wrong, but they don't uh, involve the benefit of the doubt that our peers get, which, and end up getting an insane amount more capital than we do on a natural basis. So the cool thing that inspires me is the fact that it's not an industry that black folk have not remixed and taken to a different level. I'm looking at you brothers in music and entertainment and beyond. We've done that in this space, in that space, and that's coming to tech. Uh, so this is the best time, not just to be a tech founder, in my opinion, even in the midst of a, a COVID. Black mm -hmm. and brown folks mm -hmm. been living in COVID for years. We've been living with uh, financial restraints ah, and other stuff. Talk that shit. <laughs> no, that's so, real. Yeah, Cortez, I'm coming to you because um, tech okay. investors, venture capitalists, they're not usually black. So how does this affect the black community in terms of our stake in technological advancements and new inventors who who don't get f funded? You know what I mean? Where 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 are the plugs at in this space? I mean, I'm I'm actually dealing with it right now. Um, one thing I got going on, I'm I'm, I'm getting into the edutainment, education and entertainment, uh, education technology, I call it edutainment mm -hmm. field, right? Mm -hmm. Launching this uh, soon, probably the next two months, uh, launching this platform called Be Great. Um, it's, um, 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 it's a, uh, if, if you want to compare it to Masterclass, so right. it's, 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 you know, and I need all y'all on, I'm probably gonna get tap it to everybody that's on here. Now, look, look, part look. Of it. I, I want you to know, not, not to cut you off, but I want you to know I love it already because yeah. that's where I got my start. I graduated, I went to FAM first, graduated from Columbia, you know yeah. what I mean? And at 23, the head of my department was like, look, don't feel like you gotta run to LA right away. If you want, you could teach here. So at 23, right. I was a college professor. I made up a class called Hip Hop Beat Making. And that was the beginning of learning how to articulate what it was that we were doing in the studio. So like, I, I, I yeah. love where you going with this edutainment, bro. Please continue. Yeah, so I need that. So yeah, so that's what it is. It's, it's masterclass for black people, right? I want to purposefully do something, you know, that, you know, cause I feel like um, it's a lack of exposure still in our community. And as I've been thinking about putting us on an equal playing field, I feel like, you know, uh, uh, these kids need to see people 
like us, you know, like technology is allowing them to sit there. You see, they're learning from home right now. It's a lot. I feel like the, the curriculums are archaic, and it's, it's you know a lot. It's allowing them to open it, open their computers get on the platform and really learn. I want them to learn from people that look like us, you know, and right. with skills, with a skill set and how to get there. So I was saying that to say, on the raising side, I think it's just more about, you know, we don't, we don't, it, there's gatekeepers, but I've learned there's gatekeepers in in, in, in that space, you mm-hmm. know, uh, and, and with these venture capitalist firms where it's a whole lot of money sometimes to get in this space, I'm blessed enough to kind of pivot that way through, like we said, Troy Carter, who mm-hmm. first kind of, introduced me early on, you know what I'm saying? Then my partner with uh with Maverick Guy Osiri and, and Ashley Kutcher, they're heavy in it. So I've been able to make some dope investments, but also led the lane, you know what I'm saying? And I'm right. like, I'm like this. So I'm looking like I'm in, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've been blessed to put my money in there, but I'm looking like, wait, you know what I'm saying? So I think right. that it's gonna take platforms like me. So I open it up. You know, uh, uh when we started this and we started raising, you know, when we started raising, I'm hitting up everybody that I know whether it's my first, my artist clients and my athletes that we represent, you know, let my homies put in. I wasn't giving them no top, you know, some like you don't have to put in, you don't have to have fifty, seventy five thousand dollars in this next series. We gonna have a crowdfunding type uh, uh, raise so that any normal black person that just have two thousand dollars, a thousand dollars coming around can invest. I think that's what it is. There's gatekeepers that keep it. Then they set the level so high. Whereas though, you know, ain't no, you know, black families got just, you know, the average black family got 50 grand, 100 grand just sitting around right, to, right. to make these investments in these companies. So I think that's the problem. And I think that it's going to take people like myself who start, you know, who's starting this tech company to make sure I purposely think about us and, and help get not only educate with this platform I'm, I'm, I'm doing, educate black people about things like that and about tech, but also real, allow them real. to invest. Tuma and Spec, because now, yeah. now I'm thinking about now I'm thinking about Nas, you know, and how he has truly gotten to the bag with his tech investments. Who are the other black players in entertainment and technology? Um, and what's the secret sauce? I mean, one I hear about a lot is Paul Judge in Atlanta. Uh, I, I hear a lot of uh, a good angel investing he does. Uh, one you talking about Nas? Don't sleep on Chameleon Air. Yeah. Chameleon Air. Chameleon Air. Yeah. Is basically built a, a successful career, right? And it's his mission for to for black people to know about getting gaining access to capital. He, he he's a venture capitalist. He, he's he's a venture capitalist, and he's like very and he, and, he, and, he, and he stays tapped in in terms of like what's what the hot the hot investments are, the startups, the the ones that are gonna blow. He shares that information because a lot of the issue is uh, information sharing. We don't have access to the information because we don't have the relationships. We're not, right. we're, not we're not plugged into that network of venture capitalists uh, in the, in Silicon Valley, right? Who are who are putting because these are capital intensive um, ventures. You got to pay engineers big money for them to not take a job at some other uh, startup or big tech company, etc. So, uh, chameleon era. Uh, uh, I mean, you mentioned Troy earlier, right? right. Uh, I, I, he, he, I attended Troy's, um, the, the Adam Factory, their incubator or accelerator, um, and uh, I attended the Code and Culture in, in Detroit. Blew my mind, like literally, blew my mind. Troy Carter, I'm sorry, I said Troy, but it's just it's Troy Carter for those who don't know what Troy Carter is. But when uh, I got invited to that, and I got exposed to the the knowledge that they were sharing and and that was both tech and culture right, right it was right. The convergence and, and 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 you're talking about articulating at columbia college about what you do in the music business how about how hard it is to articulate culture to tech people or how hard it is to uh, um, articulate tech to cult, uh, people who are into culture you know right. you know so, right. so that convergence and what he was uh, doing there with the culture code, I was blown away. Spec, what you got with it, man, as far as, you know, brothers in the business, man, that, that really have figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. Like Cortez. Um, I mean, I can help you with all the school stuff. Uh, my school just did 1.2 million last month and, um, and we built it from scratch. We have over 5,000 students just building it up. Um, same thing, you know, what you're talking about, Tuma, on black individuals connecting. 
uh, I created an organization nonprofit called Power Circle, where we got all people of colors coming together to share resources. We're building technology behind it. We do doing meetups, masterminds, sharing resources, everything to connect the dots and be able to share our experiences based on what we're going through and be able to really get real feedback in real time from people who actually been there, done that, you know, it's experiencing what I'm experiencing. And we're breaking it down in three levels. First level is from 100K to a million. Uh, that's called the executive circle from a million to 15 million. It's called the founder circle and from 15 million and above. It's called a genius circle. So building technology where if you want to come in and you want to literally have a one on one conversation in the middle of the night, you can go to the part of the app where you can go and click on it, click the different details, genius circle, real estate and get mentorship right then and there on 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 real estate to learn whatever you wanna learn about. If it's investors, if it's whatever, whatever is that main thing that you need help with, you go on the resource list, you type in a keyword investors and all investors pop up, rating from one to five and it'll let you know the number, the name and then who put it in there. You know, So if you wanna reach out and have a conversation to that person before you reach out to that, to that connection, then you're good. Cause the issue is, you know, Cortez might have a, a, a plug on something that I don't even know of. I'm gonna give you an example. I had a example of, of somebody who was in the technology field and I needed access to a graphic shirt designer. And I randomly just asked him that. He was like, yo, what made you ask me? Do I know a, a t-shirt designer? And I was like, I don't know. I just, close mouth don't get fed, do you? And, right. and he had one of the top notch designers that I, my favorite designer, he gave me access to it. So it's things like that that always happen that we don't even know that you got access to this certain thing. But if it's a platform that you can just plug in everything that made a huge impact in your life and somebody can hit a key word and then go get what, what made a huge impact to you. If I had a Facebook guy that's killing it, a YouTube guy that's killing it, certain resources and connections, you type it in and boom, just because you're in a power circle, you plugged in. That's crazy. I mean, well, like I'm thinking about how when I got a question, I run to Google and to, to find a rabbit hole, you can actually yeah. run to a yes. plug. Yes. <laughs> it's, with it's this called, technology. Yes, it's called powercircles.org. Powercircles.org. Oh, you already great. built this. Oh, I'm quick. Oh, shit. <laughs> I thought you yeah, talked about something. You <laughs> said we live. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I gotta go. We was going around the circle asking about brothers that are in tech. We use Nas. It got to Spec. Spec was like, well. I do this I all <laughs> I'm the plug, man. Hey, man. Yeah. 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 We just started taking applications. Literally, we opened up last week. We only opened it up to uh, 30, 30 founding members. And um, right now we're at. We close it off. We have over 100 applications already, but we're just bringing everybody in step by step, taking them through the application process, the vetting, interviewing process, and then we letting everybody in one by one. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so look at this. We got a question that just popped in <laughs> from Yolanda W. She says, so again, I, I, I don't know if she had an attitude, but I'm just telling you the vibration that I'm feeling from the question. Uh, again, so, yeah. <laughs> so again, how would someone like myself get to the information they have access to? I can't call Nas and be like, put me on game. That's how, yeah. that's how well, you have to come in high on the questions, man. Yeah, so this is what I would definitely say, like people like Cortez coming up with these programs. I have my programs. Right now, the information is out there. You just got to figure out who breadcrumbs you're going to follow. Success leave clues. You got, you got to figure out who is you going to be a mentor and how you're going to take that person who has the address to where you want to be at and let put it into your GPS of success and let him guide you to there. If it's a detour, say, hey, go here, save 10 days. Then your mentor is going to tell you that and get you that to the quickest way possible. So stop worrying about like the the the, the what. Go focus on the who. Um. <laughs> But some of, some of the information is uh, closed. Even in music, there's a lot of information that's confidential, it's password protected. You have to be like, have gain trust. And that's where relationships comes in, right? Mm -hmm. Is, is mm -hmm. building relationships where that people can co-sign you to, uh, co-sign, no, no, no pun, <laughs> co-sign you to, to the people who do have the, you know what I mean? Not, not just the gems, but like, just the 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 the, the, the information you can't Google, the information right. that you can't think because even even uh, a spectacular uh, uh, when you have your schools and stuff that that's proprietary that's privileged information you're not just putting it out there right 
the yeah. same thing with if, if my money, if I'm going to invest in, I better, uh, you, you better understand what I need. Yes. Not, forget about, I better understand your product or what you're talking about or trust that you'll deliver and give me a return, right? So, so, so that, that's where the relationships is. That, that's that, in the music business. We know all about that. Like, yeah. and, and you, and, and you have to build the value first for me to even want to have a relationship with you to share that information with you. Why am I going to share information with you? <laughs> so this, oh, this we is getting, the thing. You were getting emotional. Yeah, this no, is the it's, thing, it's though. Real. It's real. That's why relationships are important. No, yeah, so that, many. So that. this is the this is the rule of thumb when building a relationship. Give 10 times, ask for one. You got to put more deposits in than withdrawals. And you got to figure yeah. out what that person needs and go yeah. actively, intentionally go get it for them and disappear on them. Like if I'm built, mm-hmm. listen, I build a relationship. I'm literally going to, I'm listening. I'm going to actively listen to what you need. And if you say, oh, I'm looking for assistance. I'm literally going to dig into my, my vault, go ask all my friends. I'm going to go find an assistant and I'm going to go hand it to you. Say, here you go, Cortez. Here go your assistant right here. And I'm going to haul ass. I'm gonna do that about 10 times. So by the time I ask for something, yep. it's gonna get reciprocated. And the reciprocation yep. rule is a 10X rule. So if I make you a million dollars, the reciprocation rule tells me that you wanna make me at least 10 million back. Cause I just I just handed you a quick bar for no reason. You ain't yeah. even asked for it. I literally Andy. drunk. So many people are being, uh, uh, they're not being Andy. proactive on what they want. It's not, oh, do you need help? Let me know. It's no, I'm here. What you need help with? That's heavy. No, that's, that's, hold on. Yeah, that's yeah. heavy right that's there. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's ringing spiritual too because we're servants out here, and I feel like brothers forget that we are here to serve. And by you even saying, Literally. "I pull up in the game," and boom, I'm just serving. I'm serving. I'm there. You building up that rapport. That's heavy. 